I spent five years in chronic knee pain. I had a surgery, I had ACL problems, I had patellar tendonitis, quad tendonitis, hamstring tendonitis, snapped my kneecap in half, which is what the surgery was for. And I tried everything you can think of, traditional physio, um, icing, resting, doing so much treatment. Um, what's the stuff called? Like massage guns, foam roll, and everything you can think of. And the only thing that helped was what I'm going to allow for you here today. Strength training, getting your knees stronger, getting your muscles stronger, everything. So you can see here, in COVID lockdown after my surgery, my muscle completely atrophied on my leg. My screws were coming out of my knee because there was no muscle keeping it in and just the connective tissue and everything was awful. Um, I couldn't walk three, four steps without pushing my screws back in my knee. And then about a year later, not even that, this is probably eight, nine months later, this is a while back now, like a year ago, this picture. So quite a bigger than that now. But look at the difference. It's gone from this to this. And these exercises in the video here are going to be the ones that done this and also got me back to playing football and also got me pain free. So it's insane. Also, I'm as fast as I've ever been in my life. Athletic development is crazy. So do these. One. So well, you can get started with these right now. Get my face out of the way. Banded knee extensions. So these are concentric dominant short range exercise. So you see here the bands are pulling you back down in. So you're not getting the eccentric portion and you're just squeezing your quad, quads, getting loads of blood flow. So like I say there, very, very gentle exercise. You can put your nan in these and, and she won't get hurt. Um, quad activation. After surgery, I struggled. I mean, you can see the atrophy there, but I also just struggled to get quad activation in general. I know a lot of people struggle for, with this, especially at like ACL surgeries, depending where your grass taken from, stuff like that. So these can very, very much help in actually getting the mind muscle connection back, getting the quad activation. Also, it's an easy setup. All you need is a band. With the one that I'm going to go through in a minute, obviously backwards walking. Um, you can do it with no equipment, just walking about, but it's a bit tricky. And also, it's better if you have like a dead mirror or sled or something. So all you need here is a band and a pole. You see here, all I'm doing is putting my legs in, attaching it to a pole, walking back so it's tight on the bands, and then just getting pulled into it and squeezing my quads back up. Crazy pump. So number two. This one that has music so concentric only short range you can see here you don't have any eccentric on the band it pulls you into it so you can kind of get a little bit of eccentric but in this there's none whatsoever it's just con concentric so this means that you're not getting any tissue tissue breakdown you're not getting too much muscle breakdown because the eccentric portion of lifts is where that kind of stuff happens and it's the lowest level of knees over toes training. So again, you can put your nan into these knees over toes training and not hurt her. But if you put her into something like a step up, you put a thousand pound, that's what Ben Patrick loves to say. He says, I can put my mum trying to drag a thousand pound sl sled and she's not going to hit her, get hurt because it's concentric only. But I put a thousand pounds on the back of a reverse step up. If you put a thousand pound on anyone's back in a reverse step up, your knee explodes. Like you're dead. Um, so yeah, lowest level of knees over toes training. We want to strengthen in these knees over toes positions and with a sled and something like this you can actually get your muscles stronger and get stronger in these knees over toes positions which will transfer onto getting better in step ups getting better in split squats also you've got the blood flow aspect the same as banding knee extensions where you're getting loads of blood flow and heat into the area and actually healing your connective tissue so when our body is hurt something like that sometimes you get swelling the original treatment was rice rest ice get that information down, which actually it's our body saying there's something wrong. Let me try and fix it. So if you don't take that away, it's like nothing's healing it. So it's actually prolonging the period of our healing. Whereas with this sled movement here, you're actually getting more of that heat, more of that blood flow. So you're helping speed up the, the healing, helping get extra stuff to, um, to the body's job. So yeah. And then the strength progression is, like I say, adding weight on the sled. You can go treadmills. If you've got the reverse treadmill ACG, you can turn up the resistance in that over time. You can actually get stronger using this exercise. So then three and four and 4.5, because we've got two types of calf raises, is tibs and calves, lower leg strength. So we like to build from the ground up. Banding knee extensions, kind of building from the ground up. Reverse sled, definitely building from the ground up. You've got all kinds of strength in the backwards sled. You've got foot strength, knee strength, and then we go on to tibs and calves. 
So your tib is this muscle that runs down the shin here and attached inside the knee here and down at the ankle down here. So basically, it's the first line of defense for the knee. Every time you take a step, this is going to help decelerate the body. If it's weak, then all that force which is supposed to be going into the tibialis muscle is going to be going into your shins, into your knees. Um, so technically, everyone has this debate like, tibs aren't going to help your knee pain. They are because it takes force away from it. But it's not going to be like, oh, I'm strengthening my knee with the tip raises. That's not true. You're strengthening a muscle below it, which is going to help, but you're not strengthening your knee. So then we go KOT calf raises. So there's two muscles in the calf. One's the big one that we can all see that everyone trains with the straight leg calf raises, gastroc or belly of the calf. And then we have this one that runs deep underneath um, the, the big calf. Um, which is called the solis, and this gets more preferentially trained in knees over toes positions or seated calf raises, something like that. Um, again, this is really, really weak, so we see a lot of Achilles tears, a lot of damaged feet and ankles because we're not training in these solis, and they're really strong. They're the most pound for pound strength out of any muscle in the human body, so get them strong, you're going to be loving life. So, all lower legs covered here tib raises, sol uh, tibs, solis gastroc belly of the calf so do all three then reverse step ups so this is also a short range exercise but it's eccentric training now you're loading into this way down rather than the sled you're just doing this portion here where you're going back up and this is a joint dominant movement so the actual limiting factors are going to be your acl your meniscus all this connective tissue inside your knee so you've got to be careful patella tendon as well start on flat ground start with an isometric if you're pushing through pain on this, you're only going to regress in the future. So just take your time with it, um, build up, probably load first, and then go high over time. Play around with it, but don't push through pain. Um, so yeah, there's three variations of this. So you've got the Patrick, which is flat foot. This hits ankle and knee, does more ankle mobility. Um, the Poliquin, you raise your heel, makes it more knee dominant. Your knee goes more over your toe. When your knee goes over, more over your toe, you get more pressure on your knee. Um, so this can be a good thing and a bad thing, depending on how much load your, your knee can handle. Um, I personally love the Poliquin because I had major, major knee issues and I just built it up slowly, pain-free over time. And now my my knee and my patella tendon are super, super strong um, because I have done that. I've got to like 15 inch step up. Um, but you want really the goal is like six inch and then load, load there over time. Um, obviously don't start there, start flat ground, start assisted. But yeah, Peterson step up is then no um actual like heel elevation kind of thing but you lift your foot up so if you imagine this when you're going when you're lowering this leg here you're lifting this foot so it's more foot strength your knees going more over your toe and then you're going back down so it's more advanced i like to play around but i usually do six weeks of poliquin six weeks of peterson six weeks of patrick depending on the goals as well if people's got worse ankle mobility i put them on patrick more and to be honest most people put on patrick just to start with because it's less knee over toe less pressure and then we can build to the polygon and stuff like that so the progressions are load and height um so you can use assistance of the body weight to start with you can use flat ground you can use just three inches you can use whatever and then just build up over there uh, and then you want to get to about six inches in height 50 percent of body weight um on, on the on the bar so that's the end goal don't have to rush there. Like I say, take your time, progress it slowly, make sure you're not going for any pain. So yeah. Why have I not muted that? One sec. Okay, muted. Five and six, knee flexion for the hammies. So a lot of traditional training focuses on a lot of extension. So hip extension, which hammies do. Um knee flex uh knee extension, which are the quads, so squats. Um, and then we've got trap bar deadlifts for hip extension and then also calf raises. We, so we need to train flexion at the same time. So hamstring curls to start with, which are short range. So this is another way to think about short range and long range. So on the Nordic curl here, there's no um, tension at the top. But when you get down to these bottom positions here, that's where all the stress is, where all the tension is. Well, as on the hamstring curl, it's the opposite way. All the tension is going to be when it's up the top. When, it, when you're up here on a hamstring curl machine, but when you're down the bottom, you can just like be fine and be chilling. So that's another way to think about that. The end goal is gonna be Martin, Marty St. Louis Nordics, which I do have a video of, but it's not on here. And you basically are flat ground Nordics, but it takes time. Start with hammy curls, 
going to Nordic Eccentrics. I'd done that Nordic Eccentrics for about a year and a half before I actually got a full Nordic. Then I moved to Mighty St. Louis Nordics. Now I'm getting about 10 or so. Um, so it is, again, like these are end goals. You need to take your time with them. Um, I really do think Nordic curls could stop a lot of ACL injuries um, because you're getting strong. Your, your ACL is under tension in knee flexion. So when you're doing these exercises, you're not necessarily flexing your ACL, but it's under tension. It's getting stronger. It's getting thicker. So, yeah. And then next is the ATG split squat. Here is a long range movement. Obviously, these can cause issues for people if you go jump into it too fast because it's a lot of knee over toe. It's a lot of full range. So you want to take it slow. Elevate your front foot. Um, use a slow tempo and also use assistance of your upper upper body where needed and maybe even cut the range a bit short to start with um i i like this because it's unilateral so it helped me re rebuild my leg quad size leg to leg um like like you saw in the beginning this was a key exercise and also the step up um i only got into squats probably a year after doing the other two exercises but i don't recommend that for most people i just done it because i was scared of squats <laughs> um and then also, you get a component on the back hip flexors, strength through length. So if you've got tight hip flexors, tight hips, that's also going to be pulling on your knee. So you see how my back leg stretched out here. You get an amazing load through there. And then the progressions, like I say, lowering the height over time for the mobility and then taking assistance of the body weight for um, the actual strength of the knee and then loading over time. I think this was probably that year ago again. Now I'm about 40 kg split squats, maybe even more than that um, for reps. I think I've done 50 for two at one point, um, which is pretty cool. Low-key flex. Um, and yeah, after we've rebuilt our ability to go into a full range of motion, we can then go into a squat. Um, you need to use a full range of motion on squats. Don't be half squatting. You can half squat in certain situations, but make sure you can squat the same weight full range of motion. Otherwise, your connective tissue isn't going to be as strong you're building more robust connective tissue you're like you've got to think about like a hinge like when you're down in the, this bottom portion it's causing pressure on your knee and it's causing synovial fluid um to come into the knee and heal it so a hinge needs oil your knees need synovial fluid to get it greased up to get it going um so yeah it's a mid-range exercise I'm gonna build a lot of strength a lot of quads um, and then you've got variations, which are slant boards. So slant board squat here, with this is also a VMO squat. So if you get more knee over toe, more heel elevation, it goes more into a VMO squat where in the bottom portion of the exercise, um, we're getting more quad activation, more pressure on the knee. Um, you can just use ATG buddies to raise your heels and turn it into like, it's still a knee dominant squat, but it's not as knee dominant as something like this, where you're really, really pushing your knees forward. So yeah, and then the progression for this is just load. So you can start with assistance of the upper body and then move to dumbbell in front or even counterbalance. Counterbalance helps you get into the deeper ranges. And then dumbbell in front, barbell on back, barbell in front, switch it up, play around with it. VMO squat, you can't do as much weight. The goal for that is like 25% of body weight. Um, whereas an actual AG squat is more like 100 percent of body weight so yeah cool 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 then couch stretch so this is the only stretch i have in here obviously these are just 10 exercises i would put a lot more in but these these are key so these really unlock your hip flexors so if you didn't know the rectus femoris is technically a hip flexor which is part of your quad and you want to lengthen and strengthen that so when you're in this couch stretch not only are you hitting that the hip flexors up here but you're hitting the quad hip flexor um, and taking pressure off your knee becoming more mobile and this in combination with the atg split squat is going to be a beauty so yeah the progressions are from just on the couch so your knee can come further out and you can just have your ankle on like a couch or a bench something like that and then incline bench again you can use the height um to scale how much um thing you're getting here so on an incline bench it would be back here rather than straight up here and then you can eventually move to a wall and then try and get this kind of stretch don't push this too fast i remember i kind of injured my quad back in the day when i first started these because i was like god this is i kept doing this it was like i want to get to these standards i want to get to these standards don't rush don't rush 
because you're going to hurt yourself. You're going to get injured again. And here, then you can go into a pulse, which I'm doing here. So you see how I'm going from back on the wall, which is more quad, more of this rectus femoris, and then leaning forward, getting more onto the hip flexors up here. So it's more of a movement rather than just a static stretch. So yeah, try it out. Um, obviously regress it, but yeah, cool. And then heat, city, good morning, strength through length. So last exercise here, it's just getting the hip extension down now. So strength through length, we've got adductors working. We've got lengthening of the glutes. We've got low back strength. We've got hamstring strength. So it's an amazing, amazing exercise for pretty much everything. And the progression of this is load. So having more load on your back like this, and then over time as well, using incline to, so you basically want your abs to get to the bench first, keep your back kind of rounded or flat, flat here. And then you can just use an incline bench to be able to measure that. So if you start with an incline bench up here and you can get your abs to the bench, move it down. If you can then get it out of your bench, move it down. You want your your ankles to be in front of your knees, and then you're spreading these out here, getting right into the groins, lengthening the glutes. It's my favorite low back exercise. I think either Louis Simmons or Charles Poliquin, one of the two, said, "If you're a strong back, you're strong. If you've got a strong back, you got a strong. You are a strong person. So, if you build a strong back, all of your lifts are going to go up. It's part of your core." And it's actually the most neglected part. Everyone just thinks, oh, your cores are your abs, your obliques, this kind of stuff. This, the train loads of that. Train your low back. That is probably a more important part of your core. Um, and everyone's got like, the hunchbacks and like sitting at the desk all day. It's all pressure on the back. So we want to open up everything, strengthen it. So yeah, those are my 10 exercises. There is more. There's there's a bunch more that I program in. I've got Jefferson curls, loads of different mobility stretches, loads of strength exercises. But these, if you're if you just do these ten, you're you're gonna be in a good place, better place than what you are. So yeah, cool. Sign up for my free five day workshop. It's gonna be held on school. We're gonna go through everything you need to be able to get get away after that five day workshop and be able to fix your knee, to be able to know all the nutrition stuff. Obviously these YouTube videos help as well, You can, um, but it's a live call. So you're gonna be able to come in, ask me questions about your specific rehab, um, everything like that. Also link will be down below to book a free strategy call with me, probably like 30 minutes. We'll just go over your situation, how I can help you. And yeah, good luck. Hope these exercises help. I'm just here to help my younger self. So I, I really do hope these this video helps and this is a bit of a long one so whoever sat through this comment something which i know uh comment comment locked in if you've got this far in the video down below and i'm going to be liking it and i'll probably send you a dm and, and talk to you and help you out with some stuff so yeah cool thanks for watching guys